enter your access code followed by the pound or hash sign. Good evening, everybody. Come on in. I'm just setting up the uh I'm just setting up the phone lines right now. Before more people get in the group. But please click the like button on your on your way in. Let me enter my PIN number. Thank you. There is one host in this conference. Okie dokie. Okay, again, make sure you guys please click on that like button. If you are not already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel and make sure you click the notification bell so that you can receive all of my live reviews and all my uh, uploads when I go live or when I, you know, upload a video. But anyway, you guys, welcome to the chat. As you can see from the title of the... Um, title of the chat we're going to be discussing r kelly uh kells um today we heard some really really shocking news um some people were expecting it to come some of us thought it would never come some of us are upset over the fact that he has been indicted and some of us are overjoyed over the fact that he has been indicted. So I want to know where do you guys stand and how do you feel about the whole situation? Because in like Facebook groups and YouTube live videos and on the blogs, I'm seeing all kind of just different, you know, <laughs> different opinions and different views and oh wow. And then some people think it's a conspiracy that uh, Jesse Smollett, even though he's the one who told a big old whole lie about being attacked by some white supremacists, um, and R. Kelly, even though he's been known for years for uh, messing around with underage girls, they think it's some kind of conspiracy to ruin Black History Month. <laughs> that is a new one I, I man i'm telling y'all i'm telling y'all the comments i've been seeing and the comments i've been reading and the conversation i've been in all day today since um we found out r kelly has been indicted has been off the chain but anyway again i got the phone lines open i'm going to put the number uh in the chat as well even though you can see it right on the screen but the phone number is 605 Four seven five four zero seven five. 475 Access code 753359. And let me... One second. I'll just put it 605-475-4075. Access code 753359. And also, let me know where you guys are watching me from. Hit me up in the chat. Represent where you where you hit where you um you know representing tonight. East Coast, West Coast, down south, the dirty Midwest. I'm in the Midwest. For most of y'all who don't know, um, Miss Tanya's live prime time is from Omaha, Nebraska, born and raised, and that is where I am going live from tonight. But just to break it down to you. Some of y'all that's probably been sleeping under a rock. Um, yes, it is official. When I first saw it on the uh, internet this morning, I thought this was a hoax. I'm like, this ain't true. Did somebody just making this up? They creating a hoax like Jesse did. They just creating a big old whole hoax, a whole lie. But I was like, what? For real? Oh, hey, Ms. Hogg, how you doing? <laughs> you said you figured you were working on this R. Kelly story. It's about time for him to do his time. Can't call in hubby trying to sleep again. Laugh out loud Easter time. Hey, I, I get it. I get it. Let the hubster um, get his sleeves on. <laughs> hey, Miss Mama G, how you doing? Oh, you did. Okay, thank you for coming over from Miss Gina's channel. Thank you. Thank you for the love. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I really do appreciate that. 
And uh, yes, Miss Hogg, uh, I was supposed to go live, you know, earlier today. Um, me and Sam, Samantha, you know, um, we do a uh, a movie review segment called Sisters from Another Mister, for those of you um, who don't know. But right now, we're dealing with some inclement weather. We're expecting 7 to 10 inches tonight into the morning. It's going to start with some freezing, drizzle, sleet, rain, and turn into snow. So I told her, stay home. Stay warm. You know, we'll reschedule that. And I'll just do the R. Kelly Live tonight. But so that's why, for those of y'all who were expecting us to do a review on what men want with Taraji P. Hinton, we are going to reschedule that. I promise. I promise. But hey, also, you checking in from D.C., Miss Mama G., Northern Virginia? Okay. Okay. I've never been there. I've never been that far. But, but I have plans to visit. The East Coast next year. I really want to visit, like, you know, D.C. or either New York or, you know, the DMV area. Somewhere over there. We haven't decided yet. But we will be hitting the East Coast up next year. But what do y'all... Oh, I didn't drop my phone. Hold on. And the phone lines are open for anybody, anybody who wants to call in. Because I definitely want to hear y'all uh, what y'all got to say. I'm going to read a few of the comments that... um. <sighs> that was going on in this uh, group that I'm in. And I want to get some feedback from y'all. And I think it's about time that R. Kelly um, get brought down. Like, seriously. No matter how much I love R. Kelly, and no matter how much I love to step in the name of love, and how much I believed I could fly. <sighs> and how much I might have reminded somebody of their Jeep. You know, we, ha we have to... Wrong is wrong. And right is right. And he has gotten away with a lot of mess for many, many years. It's overdue, Miss Hogg. Yes, ma'am, it's overdue. Um, but... There are still people that are outraged. Hold on, hold on, y'all. Let me, let me, let me read something for you. Whew. Let me read something for you. Okay. Somebody said that a lot of the bitter women should be happy right now. That's what he said. He said a lot of bitter women should be happy right now. And I'm like, a lot of bitter women should be happy right now. Like, okay, now, mind you, men and women came back at him and they were like, what do you mean, bitter women? This man, you know, enjoys little girls and dating girls, messing around with girls under the age of 16 years old. And bitter women should be happy? I mean, what does that mean? Miss Hall, I, I don't know. You know, sometimes, sometimes people say stuff and you know that you just, some things you just can't, can't, can't come back. Some things you just like, okay, I'm going to let that go in one ear and I'm going to let it go out the other ear because this is going to be somebody that you will probably end up arguing with until the next full moon. You know what I mean? One of those men who uh, feel some type of way about women, obviously, obviously, but it ain't none of his daughters or sisters or cousins or, you know, that were you know, affected by this. So, I get it. You know, you say he has a sick mind? <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Then whatever said, um, somebody else said, uh, ooh, there's so many comments on here. Uh, there are a lot of people who like, you know, about damn time with his nasty ass. Um, 
Somebody said they need to get everyone. Dig up Hugh Hefner. <laughs> they, they, they said, hold up. Oh, Hugh Hefner, rest in peace. Oh, my God. I should have read that in my head first before I read it out loud. But they said, I didn't already start at the comments, so I might as well finish it. They said, dig up Hugh Hefner <laughs> because, you know, he deserves to be punished as well. Um, hey, Joy, how you doing? Good evening. Good evening. We just sitting up here discussing about the R. Kelly indictment. Um, is he is he's been indicted on ten counts? Uh, this is this is major. This is like major. Ten counts. Earlier today, his uh his studio was surrounded by all kind of paparazzi and news reporters and. I mean, they are on him. He's going to turn himself in. You know, he's planning on turning himself in. But the 10 counts are 10 counts of aggravated sexual assault. Um, They arrested him earlier today. Earlier today, he was taken into custody um, in connection with multiple charges of aggravated sexual abuse. Specifically, 10 counts of aggravated sexual abuse. This is after decades of rumors and allegations that the R&B star was sexually abusing women and underage girls. Now, of course, of course, I know he's going to plead innocent. Of course. <laughs> He's going to plead innocent, but the judge, um, a Chicago judge has issued a no bail arrest warrant for the singer, um, which does not necessarily mean the defend the, that R. Kelly won't eventually be offered bail, you know, once appearing in court to answer to these charges. So, you know, that might change. That might change. But I know this Me Too era is about to take a shift. It's seriously about to take a shift. Um, one thing about it is, like I said, a lot of people um, think that this is a conspiracy, you know, to... Uh... Oh, you said finally they got him. Yes, Joy, finally, finally they got him, and we will see where it goes from here. Um, you, we know he's been let off before, but, but, um, there were some big reasons why he was let off before, mainly because of the parents of the little girl, um, didn't want to, I guess, put her on the stand, they kept denying that was their daughter, you know, um, it was a hot mess, so he got off. Even though a lot of us knew, we knew, especially those who saw the videotape, the vigil tape, especially those of us who saw the video, we knew that was him on that tape. We knew it. But, you know, what can you do when you got a parent sitting right here saying, that ain't my seed on that vigil tape. That ain't my seed. That ain't my daughter. I don't know who that child is. Bless her soul. I don't know who that child is. That's basically what they did. That's basically what they did. So he got off. You said Jasmine Brand showed clip where he turned himself in. Yep. And reporter was asking if he had anything to say to his fans. Did y'all see my, did you see, <laughs> did you see my thumbnail? <laughs> I don't know if y'all saw my thumbnail, but my thumbnail said, um, if I can't read it, then I didn't do it. That was in regard to the uh <laughs> the indictment. <laughs> Cause you know, I mean, I okay, maybe he can read now. Let me stop joking about that. Maybe he can read now. We shouldn't be teasing people for not being able to read, even though they didn't have millions of dollars go through their hands and they ain't hired no tutor to teach them how to read. Okay, I'm not gonna go there. You said Jocelyn Savage can go home now to her ATL family. Mm-hmm. Jocelyn, the, the, the story, I mean, how many of y'all actually watched the uh, documentary? 
I know some people couldn't bear it. They were like, I can't watch it. You know, I'm feeling a certain type of way about Kells. I just can't watch it. I told some people, you should watch it. Everybody who, whether you like R. Kelly or didn't like R. Kelly, you should watch it. Because a lot of people who have for years been saying, well, obviously he ain't did nothing. Obviously, you know, they wanted it. Obviously, you know, this, that, and the third. But for you to truly see where these ladies are coming from, you have to face it. You have to face it. Too many people are not facing certain things. And that's why they keep getting away with it over and over and over again. Because nobody wants to face it because they want to keep stepping in the name of love. And we can't take away from his vocal abilities. I know that. That man is a powerhouse when it comes to singing and entertaining. He's a powerhouse. But... You know, wrong is wrong and right is right. And I, I, I really feel like this time around, this time around, his butt is going to be sitting somewhere on a cold bench for a long time. And I pray that he's safe in prison. I pray. You said this time Michael Abernathy has tapes with him. Yep. And, the, the, yep. and that's, that's what helped this case. That's what helped this case because, uh, you know, new evidence. Um, and a girl, young girl repeatedly saying she was 14 year old while performing various sexual acts. And you know what? That's just like when they were saying in the documentary. Um, when the, when they found out that the particular girl he was, they was referring to in the documentary, I can't remember her name, but she was like 14 or 13 or something. And when they found out they was having threesomes with her, they were like, uh, we didn't feel comfortable, but we were also, you know, scared to just say no. Uh, okay. Okay. Some things, some people are just not strong enough to walk away from. I don't think that they, the ladies were just there. Not all of them. I don't think all of them was just there because they wanted to be there. In the beginning, initially, yes. Yes. And I think some of the ladies also had a point to prove. Like, the ones who really believed that he was innocent, really believed that people was making up stories about him all these years, I think they really felt like they had something to prove as far as, you know, going to be with him. Like, nah, he ain't no child molester. Nah, he ain't no rapist. Nah, he ain't no pedophile. Nah, that's R. Kelly. He can have anybody he wants, any woman he wants. And I think they mainly have something to prove. And then when they got in there and, and realized what, what they were really facing once they got inside those walls, it was a wrap. It was a wrap. It was very disturbing, Joy. You said they're going to get him in prison to hate you. And see, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Like, all the money in the world, no matter how many... And, and you know what? Some of the people in prison have probably made tons of babies off of him. Tons of babies off of his music. They gonna show him how they made them babies. Once he get to prison. <laughs> I'm just... Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Yes, you said they gonna get him, Joy. Yep. Yep. They are gonna get him. Mm-mm-mm. But, okay. Let me... Let me, uh... Here's something else. This is what somebody said. It's, it's a man. I won't say his name. He said, on behalf of black men that understands the value of a woman and the purity of children, I would like to apologize to all the women that's been hurt. I was like, oh, now that's really, really nice. That's really, really nice. He, I mean, you should, you shouldn't have to apologize for another man, you know, another whole grown man who knows right from wrong, you know. But then somebody said he's going to beat this case. 
And they think that basically this whole um, indictment, like I said before, they think it's a conspiracy. Um, it's just a distraction, you know, from what's really going on in our country. Um, and they think he's going to beat the case. They so There are people who really think he's going to beat the case. But from what most of y'all are saying so far, y'all, y'all, y'all feeling like I'm feeling like, oh, no, he's going down. He's going down. This time around, he's going down. They, they got these new tapes with the girl telling that she's 14 over and over and he's still engaging us. That's what he get for recording everything. He y'all know he records everything. They said he has duffel bags and duffel bags full of tapes. Years of tapes in duffel bags. Yeah, all ten counts. Mm-hmm. Yep. Tima Tama Mama, you said <laughs> Hey Tamara, how you doing this evening? <laughs> You said ask Bill Cosby if he beat his case. <laughs> um, they might become real close up in there if they end up in the same spot. I don't know. But by the time, uh, really seriously though, by the time Kells, if he do get time, which I'm hoping he will get some time because he deserves it. Um... He he deserves it. It's just point blank period. He deserves some time. Um, by the time he probably do get in there though, Bill will probably be out. Bill will be out. You said hello, hello. I just saw you at Walmart the other day. <laughs> you said they will riot in Chicago if they let that fool go this time. Man, Chicago is taking a hit, y'all. First, Jussie. And then, like, not even 24 hours after Jussie, I mean, R. Kelly. Do y'all really think it's a conspiracy? Anybody out there, feel free to call, call in. Feel, the number is on the screen, 605-475-4075. Feel free to call in. Hello? You entered I need to open my, uh, hold on, let me pull up my conference screen. That way I can tell when people are definitely on the line. You said, wonder where his ex-wife is and what she thinks about his rest. Well, one thing for damn sure, <clears throat> She still ain't gonna get no money out of him. That's one thing for darn sure. Because ever since she left him, he has... Pfft, that man, as much money as he has, he owes so much child support, it's ridiculous. So one thing for darn sure, she probably won't get any money from him. She'll probably end up putting money on his books. Taking more money from the kids. Man, just trying to secure the bag because they would write him off. And you know what? Although Fox said that they weren't really writing him off the show, I, I, I don't know. Because you know when I was doing the reviews every week on Empire, you know, we was all, you know, playing the guessing game. Who's in the coffin? You know, who's going to get killed off the show? Is it the mama? Is it Lucius? Is it Cookie? Is it... Jamal, is it, you know, Hakeem, you know, we all were trying to guess every week. The last person I would have ever thought was going to get killed off the show was him. But Fox claims that that was not the case. They was like, oh, no, we weren't going to kill him off the show. He's still too big of a character in the show and all this, that, and the third. And then, um, Jesse, from all the, inf all the investigation... They saying that he wanted more money in his contract. I guess he deserved, he felt like he deserved more money. I, 
Jesse, rest in peace to Jesse's career. That's all I have to say. Rest in peace. He might as well throw his butt in that coffin, even if he wasn't the one that's going to be in the coffin, you know, when they get to that scene. He might as well throw himself, make room for Jesse too, because he just literally threw his whole career away. He wanted more money, but ended up paying 10 k to these Nigerians to help him plan this hoax. Then he had to pay, uh, how much? 10000 to get for Bond. Now he... Lawyers, uh, I bet he gonna wish that he uh, accepted whatever amount of money that they was giving him. You know that. You know that for sure. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's so sad. It is so sad. I don't even know. I don't even know what to say about Jesse. But as far as R. Kelly... He's going down, too. They both going down. Um, but a lot of... What I really hate, though, is... Um, what I really hate, though, is how a lot of people... Um, when they see these black men get brought down, you know, when they see them have to do the time, and, you know, even though they did the crime and they've been proven innocent, they feel like it's a conspiracy... All every single time. What about that white person? What about that white person? What about this white person? What about you know the white dead Hugh Hefner? What about him and his you know bunnies? It's like should a black man? Okay, now I understand. I understand what they mean. I understand as far as um if they if they believe somebody else should be tried. Okay, let me let me read y'all this comment. Let me let me read y'all this. Y'all gonna see exactly what I mean when I say this. Because um what this lady had to say regarding that I thought was a really, really good comeback. Because the men in our chat, they was just some of the men, not all of the men, some of the men was, you know, sticking up for women. You know, it's about time, you know, if he did it, then, you know, he he deserved it, basically. That's what they were saying. Okay, now here's the comment. Okay, this is what somebody said. It was a guy. Um, He said, on top of... Okay, well, the post was about R. Kelly being indicted. Or, you know, earlier today, it was like, allegedly, or sources said. You know, because everybody was thinking, no way. Really? For real? Like, okay, we know it's, it should be coming. We know he deserves to be indicted. But, you know, when it really happened, everybody was like, for real? Is this real? So, anyway. Anyway, it says, uh... On top of on top of this black okay what I think they left out a few words in their comment. I'm gonna try to make it I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make it make sense, okay? Um on top of that black media follows suit with white media. Let me read it in my head first. On top of that black media follows suit with I think they left out some words. But anyway, I'm going to just read what they said. On top of that, black media follows suit with white media and does not report what happens to white people in the same situation only when it happens to black people. Okay, I think I get, I think I got what he was saying. I think he got what he was saying. Then somebody else said, uh, another man said, don't talk about it. Do something about it. Stop letting white folks get away with it. March on down to the courthouse when they go to court, look at the judge and act for equal justice. And then a female said, he got away with it for two decades. The post isn't about some white guy. It's about a black guy who sexed underage girls in the black community. So the what about ism, I like that. The what about ism, <laughs> is a painful disease infecting America. I'm like, okay, okay, you go, girl. Good comeback. Because 
that's what a lot of people say. Regardless of how many underage girls R. Kelly has slept with, there is still somebody that says, well, what about, what about, what about, what about? I agree with this lady's com comment. He has got away with this for t over two decades. This post, this whole situation is not about some white guy. This is about a black guy, a black celebrity with a lot of fame. He used his platform to sleep with a lot, a lot. We will probably never have any idea how many underage women he really, I mean, underage girls he really slept with. We, pr over 20 years of this? Over 20 years it is. It's, pro it's probably hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of underage girls that he done slept with. So again, this situation is about, is not about a white guy. It's about a black guy who sex underage girls in the black community. Forget all this what about this white person and what about Hugh Hefner and what about Harvey and what about what about ism y'all remember that word what about ism that's gonna be my word for 2019 what about ism is a painful disease infecting America so how y'all feel about that oh and hello to everybody who just recently came into the chat who we got in here now Anne Marie, hey Anne, hey cousin, how you doing? How you doing, fam? I got my peeps in here, my Omaha peeps, my Rellos in here. Thanks for checking in, you guys. Make sure y'all all click the like button. And again, I'm trying to get this. Uh, hold on, hold on. Trying to get this, uh, here it is. Uh oh, hold on. Some of y'all, some of your comments is getting, uh, hidden. I don't know why. Because they normally only supposed to get hidden or held for review if it's like a lot of cussing or something. Yes, what about ism, honey? That's the word for 2019. <laughs> that's the new word for 2000 <laughs> throw some ebonics on that <laughs> i love it i love it hold on one second let me grab my uh five, three, three, five, nine. okay so as far as R. Kelly. Okay. For everybody who's coming in, I'm sure y'all didn't heard about it by now. I'm sure y'all done heard about it by now. R. Kelly has been indicted. Ten counts. Ten counts, y'all. Count them. Ten counts. Um, aggravated sexual abuse. Uh, basically underage girls. They have new, new founded information, new founded evidence, videotapes. And I guess... One of the people, or I don't know if it's the only one, or one of the people, 14 years old, they say. 14. This man is, how old is, how old is he now? 50. 50, right? 40, 50, 49. I, I can't remember how old that man is. I know he too old to be messing around with some got doggone 13, 14, 15, 16 year old girls. He's much too old for that. But I really do, I really do hope they get him. And and it's and it's kind of like the Jesse situation. Like with the just the Jesse situation, you know, with the whole attack, you know, the whole hoax and everything. Um Nobody wants anybody who's innocent to go to jail, especially if you are a big fan. You just don't. But just like the R. Kelly situation, 
If he did it, he did it, and he needs to face the time. And he's been doing it for so long, for so long. It's like when them ladies was on that platform and they was giving a story, I felt them. Now, now a lot of people like, you know, one of them chicks, you know, we, uh, we're not really sure about her. You know, we're not really sure about that one. But for the most part, I believed everything they had to say. And it was mainly because it's so many people with the same stories from managers, from security guards, from even people that not even in his camp, like other celebrities that hung around him a lot. I mean, I hate that they didn't speak up about it by then. But R. Kelly's payroll was long. R. Kelly's payroll was long. You know? And granted, some people that he probably was paying probably aren't getting paid anymore. Or granted, maybe some people he was paying off aren't getting paid off anymore. Because R. Kelly don't have money like R. Kelly used to have money. So, even if some people are coming forward because they aren't getting paid anymore, does that still mean he should walk? Does that still mean that he should get away with it? You know, I just hate how people keep defending him just because, like, if they're not victim shaming, they just keep defending him and it's like, okay, even if it happened, it happened years ago. Let the man go. Let him go free. So he done slept with over 100 young girls. And because it was years ago, we should just let him walk. Just let him get away with it so he can keep repeating himself. You said you would love to see his accomplice. Um, Let me go back and read some of this chat. Because I definitely want to... See everything y'all gotta say. Okay, Tam, you said there's no way he deserves freedom. I agree. He knew what he was doing, fetishing young girls. He also needs help for his mental end. Yeah, I agree. And a good judge will require a psych eval and treatment. He is. He is. I, I think it is a disease. I think it is a disease. Um. Mm mm mm. Hold on, I just got, was reading this other comment. <laughs> what the? Okay, I'm gonna have to read that later. Somebody done put, oh, I hate when people put me in a, in a, Facebook inbox chat thing and all these people inboxing me. I don't know who these people are. Take me out the chat. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, he is diseased. And, and not only that, but I think he has a, um, as far as the underage girls, I think he has, um, what does they call it? Uh, Oh, God, it's on the tip of my tongue. Um, uh, people who who are over-sexual, what do you call it? Uh, nympho, nympho. I think he's also a nympho. Now, if you're a nympho and you're a nympho with your woman or your man and they love you being a nympho, that's cool. That's cool. You can have sex, two, three, four, five, Times a day, you know, if, <laughs> if if you can handle it, you know what I'm saying? But if you're a nympho and the only people you want to have sex with is underage girls, that's a bad combination right there. That's a bad combination. And the whole reason why these ladies finally and everybody else who was on the documentary finally came together to do that documentary it's because they know he will not stop unless they stop him. And that's the bottom line. He will not stop unless he's... 
I'm about to get him a new nympho, um, pedophilia, pedophilic nympho mania. We have to give him a, we have to give it a name. We have to give it a name. Y'all help me figure out a name. Pedophile, nympho, um, we, we, we gotta, you know, we gotta put something together. We gotta give him a name. A name for his situation. I mean, it's sick. It's really, really sick. You know, really sick. You said you would love to see, um, yeah, he's about 50. Yep, he's about 50. Miss Hogg, you said you agree he should be mandated to psychiatric evaluation. Mm hmm. Yep. And that's the thing. This man, okay, allegedly he was sexually abused by females in his family. Allegedly, his sister. And I don't know if it was another woman involved, but allegedly his sister, from what his brother says, from what other people say, she sexually um, molested or, you know, both of them when they were young, when they were little. Um, I don't think that's the only thing that happened to him, and I don't think that's the only one. I don't think the sister was the only one. Um, he never got help. And as we all know, a lot of people who grow up being sexually abused or physically abused, they end up practicing that on other people, other weaker people, just like, you know, it happened to them. So he never got help, and I really do think that if he would have probably got some help back then, you know, instead of focusing on his career, because keep in mind, R. Kelly was hot at a very young age. He was hot and popping at a very young age. Um, and I'm sure his, his from the time he was a little boy, and they saw him work them instruments and work them vocals and sing them songs and dance, they saw dollar signs. They saw dollar signs. We can't deny that. I mean, that's quite obvious. His family, his friends, his parents, his uh, sisters, his cousins, his brothers, they saw dollar signs. So let's push this to the side that this little boy has been, you know, molested or raped or sexually assaulted by a family member. We're going to push this all aside and we're going to push him towards his career so he can get paid and we can get paid. That's what ended up happening. So all that violence that was done to him was probably pushed back into the rear of his mind, you know, all the way down. And he started singing. He started making money, you know, from uh, uh, public announcement, the group that he started with, you know, to his own, you know, solo career. But he never got over it. He never got over it. And with a lot of people... The thing about R. Kelly also, I think, was R. Kelly missed a large portion of his childhood. I think he missed a large portion of his childhood. And, you know, if y'all ever watched Iyanla, no matter how you might feel about Iyanla, some of the stuff that she say makes sense. She does make it make sense. And what she has said um, on several occasions was sometimes when you lose your childhood, and you block out a lot of things, when you grow up, you still kind of in that same age frame, that same mind frame, even when you older. And that's why I think he was messing around, even when he was like 19, 20, 25, almost 30, messing around with Aaliyah and all them other, you know, young girls, even at that age, because he probably still thinking, this was cool, you know, when it happened to me, I'm not that old. I'm not that old. I'm not a predator. I I can do this. It, it's my right. I, I really think that he thinks that it's his right. And that he deserves this. Because it was done to him. All that from not getting no help. Hey, Jewel. Hey, how you doing? 
Oh, Tam. Yes, we talked about that before. I would love to see his accomplices go down because it wouldn't be fair if he went down by himself. It wouldn't be fair. It it, it just wouldn't be. Because a, a, a lot of people, man, if everybody, his accomplices went down, man, you know how many people that might be? Do you realize how many people that might be? I mean, from the people who flew these girls in and out of the city, the ones who contacted these girls on social media, some of them was contacted by, okay, remember MySpace? MySpace, some of them was contacted by MySpace, you know, before Facebook was even popping. Um, contacting little girls at concerts. Man, it, it, if they got all the accomplices, there would be a whole lot of people going down. They are all guilty, right? Right, Miss Mama G? They are all guilty. You said he's not going down by himself. Oh, and that's the thing. That's the thing. He, he probably will just give up the names. He probably will. I don't know if it might mean a more lenient sentence on him, though. But... Even if they don't give him a more lenient sentence, he still is probably the kind of per kind of person. Because regardless of how we see R. Kelly, regardless of what grade level he still reads and writes on, um, R. Kelly is a very intelligent man. He might not can read the contracts. He might not can read that indictment. <laughs> but he's still a very smart man. How else could he have got away with this for so long? See, we can't under underestimate R. Kelly just because, you know, he he, he has, you know, a reading disability. You said a lot of money, a lot of people gained money off R. Kelly um, and knew what he was doing. Yep, yep. You right, Emory. You right. You are absolutely right. The record label could have got him help, but they didn't care enough. Because it, the payroll, how T.S. Madison do it? <laughs> his, his payroll, it was long. It was long. Then nobody cared. His family didn't care that he was getting molested. They didn't care. Um... And even the people around him, like I said, his friends, his uh, managers, they all knew that man was messed up in the head. But they wanted to, they wanted to ride that money train as long as they could. They wanted to ride that money train as long as they could. See what they probably believed. What they probably believed was R. Kelly was going to eventually get caught and eventually go to prison. But this is years and years and years ago. They probably believed that years and years ago. Okay, this fool gonna get caught up, y'all. You know, he got all these little girls. Look at that one over there. She ain't even fully developed yet. Yeah, yeah, he gonna get caught up, y'all. He, Yep, yep. And, and if they ask me any questions, I'm gonna act like I don't know nothing. That's probably what they was doing. But in the meantime and in between time, we gonna ride this money train. And cash and, you know, <laughs> get all the money from this cash cow while we can. They probably had no idea 20 years down the line he still would be walking around free. You know. <laughs> but I, I, it's time. It's time. It's time. Let me see what else y'all got to say in the comments. Uh, I like that word, aboutism. I'm going to start using it. Yes, you know, <laughs> Joy. <laughs> when I read that on the blog where a lot of people, a lot of the men, and it, it, it's sad. You know what really bothers me? What really bothers me the most is... The fact that most of the men who was trying to get him a pass and who, 
you know, are doing the most victim shaming are our brothers. Is the black men that are doing most of the victim shaming and trying to get him a pass. And always, what about this white man? What about that white man? What about this white man? What about this white man? What about ism is a serious disease in America. What about ism? That's the new word for 2019. <laughs> that add that to the ebonics dictionary. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not ebonics, but you know, it it should be in a dictionary. What about ism? Everything isn't about somebody else. We need to focus on who we need to focus on. He needs help. He needs psychiatric help. He needs mental help. He needs nympho help. He needs he needs a lot of help. He he needs a whole slew of doctors to help him. That's that's what he needs. Like really and seriously, a lot of prayer, a lot of Jesus, um, a a lot of hell Marys. I don't even know how to do it. I I don't even know how to do it. He need a lot of hell Marys. Bleed him dry. Oh, they don't. They don't have much. They they don't bled him dry. They don't bled him dry. I mean, R. Kelly is still making money off of, you know, work that he's already done. He's still making money because even after the documentary, wasn't it crazy? How there was a spike in his album sales. That was crazy. But you know what? They said that was probably mainly due to. A lot of people who really didn't listen to his music wanted to hear what it was all about. Because a lot of people, you know, R. Kelly, he's, he's, they think he's a narc. I, I'm not well read on narcissism. But they say he's a, he's narcissistic. Um, and basically, like, okay, age ain't nothing but a number. I mean, there are certain songs that people, when we look back at them, we'd be like, damn, that fool was probably talking about a 14-year-old or a 15-year-old. You know what I mean? And when we say all his accomplices should be brought down too, what do y'all think about Andrea? Or is it Andrea, his wife, Andrea? Do y'all really think she was an accomplice? Because I know some people do. Me personally, I think she knew more than what she's letting on or she knows more than what she's letting on. No matter how many interviews she do and how many tears she cry about her being abused. And I also believe she was abused. I, I do believe she was abused. So I'm not um, trying to uh, shame her or victim shame or tease her for that. None of that. I think that she, um, like a lot of the grown-ups, the grown-ups, the adults, you know, who were there in the situation, also didn't come forward because they didn't want to be an accomplice. Because they knew, like, if this would have been really fresh, if this would have been really fresh, like, let's say, it's been 20 some years, let's say, um, after Aaliyah, and a few more girls down the line. And after uh, the girl on the tape, let's say he would have got, you know, truly like the parents said, yes, that's my daughter. That's her. You know, if they would have, you know, let her testify, you know, all that. And he was charged. I'm pretty sure all those people around him, the people flying in the girls, contacting the girls, it would have been no question about it. Like in this Jesse situation, how them two Nigerian guys got off, um, that wouldn't have happened. Not with them. They wouldn't have got off. No matter how much they probably cooperated with the law like the Nigerians did. Uh-uh. You said narcissist. Now Tam says narcissistic men can't feel empathy and they only focus on themselves. 
they feed off of the energy of others like leeches until they use you all up. Man, if that don't sound like hells. Oh, yeah, that's definitely him, too. <laughs> Joy. <laughs> that's definitely him, too. And that would explain a lot um, as far as how some of the older women, after they kind of, like, aged out, and he start using them to lure, you know, more young girls in. It's like he done used them all up. Oh, you over age. You over the age of 18 now. I ain't got no need for you. You know, he done promised them a career, promised to help them with their music career, promised to make them famous, used them all up for their bodies. Then they age out, and then it just starts all over again. It just starts all over again. So, I really do believe that a lot of them needs to be charged, not just kills, not just kills, because they were the adults, they knew right from wrong, um, they basically enabled him to take advantage of underage girls for many years, many years. Because they wanted to be on that money train. They wanted to stay on that money train. That's what that was about. You said the... I'm just reading reading some of your comments. Oh, dang. Yeah, let's not talk about the herpes. Lord Jesus. I'm surprised he don't have full-blown AIDS. And I, I'm serious. Now, I don't wish... No disease on nobody. I don't wish one herpy bump on nobody. On nobody. But I'm I'm just surprised. Am I saying this right? <laughs> I'm surprised. I'll, okay, let me put it this way. I wouldn't be surprised if he has a whole other, um, a whole other slew of germs diseases i would not be surprised like syphilis gonorrhea chlamydia herpes warts i mean lord have mercy it's sad it's sad when i heard that young girl on the documentary, well, she wasn't young anymore, but um, she met him when she was 15. Uh, and when she found out she had herpes, it's like your life, in a sense, is ruined, but not ruined. Like, you can live with it. It's not like AIDS or anything like that where... You know, you know your time is coming. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. But your time is coming. Um, it's not like stage four cancer where you don't know the day, but your time is coming. You know, unless God performs a, you know, miracle on your behalf. But with herpes, you can live with it. It, it might come and go, but you can live with it. But just imagine getting a disease like that at a very young age before you even know what your body really wants. Before you even know yourself as a woman. And you already got diseases before you are even old enough to drive. Like... You, you, some grown man giving you an incurable disease before you are old enough to drink, before you are old enough to smoke, and then he just throws you away. He just throws you away and finds you a replacement. I'm sure he had many diseases, like many diseases. And then, you know, he allegedly sleeps with men and women. Men and women. You know, he, he made them uh, perform sexual acts on him and men. 
Mason watched him. Mason watched him perform sexual acts on other men and women. I mean, it was a big smorgasbord of orgies going on, you know, on his property. So I'm sure he had many diseases. Hell, they probably had an on call doctor <laughs> with penicillin shots on demand. An on-call doctor <laughs> with penicillin shots on demand. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yes, Joy, they, they all need to be in prison together. They do. Yep, Joy. Oh, Joy, you talking about um, Iyanla? I love me some Iyanla. Sometimes Iyanla goes too far. But in the end, you know, in the end, she's good at what she does. She, she, she's not perfect. She's not perfect, but she didn't help a lot of people and helped a lot of families, you know, over time. You said the yeah, Miss <laughs> I always say, you don't never know what's in the red cup. It could be Kool-Aid. It could be um, water. It could be um, apple juice. Uh, it could be yak. Mm. Never know. You said that's what trap. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, Tamara. It deleted your. <laughs> Why you delete your message? <laughs> Why you delete your comment? I saw something about trapped in the closet. <laughs> What was you saying? You said that's what trapped him in the... Oh! Oh! You know what? Okay. I feel really not smart right now. Because that is something that I'm sure people have put, you know, two and two together. But I never thought about that. I never thought about that. Until you just said it. That's crazy. That's crazy. And how many trapped in the closets were it? Like... 12, 19, 5, <laughs> I can't remember, but, um, yeah, that's probably what it was about, it probably what it was about, and, you know, um, again, as far as, like, some of those accomplices, um, some of them, you know, uh, uh, participating in, uh, same sex, uh, relationships. It's all on video. Because you know he records his sex sessions. He records everything. This is something he's probably not only hold, held over the heads of, you know, the young girls or women that he abused, but probably on the other people who was involved. Like, um, one of the guys, you know, allegedly involved in, uh, having sex with him and, you know, things like that was, uh, was it one of his, um, it was one of his, uh, somebody in his circle. I can't remember what he actually did, like what his job was, but I think he was a bodyguard. I, y'all, y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was a bodyguard. You said, you ladies have a beautiful evening. It was great being in chat. Oh, thank you, Joy. Thank you for stopping through. Thank you for stopping through. I appreciate that. And you said he was running a sex cult. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. He was he was trying to be the next Hugh Hefner, but he done messed up. You, what's that movie, uh, Minister Society? You know you done effed up now. I can imagine them saying that to him when they arrested him. You know you done effed up now. <laughs> yes, good night, Joy. Code. Yep, Miss Hall, he was 
he was probably telling on himself the whole time with all those trapped in the closet songs. He probably was telling on himself. And back then, we had no idea, like no idea, R. Kelly, bisexual. I mean, but, you know, the way he was raised, the way he was taken advantage of when he was a young child, I mean, I guess it's not far-fetched. You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. And then as far as, like, his disrespect for women, um, a lot of men are like that because they've been sexually abused by older women when they were younger. If not, you know, abused by their parents, their mother. They grow up really not loving women per se, but loving to be with women and to take advantage of women, um, but not loving them per se. I, I'm sure y'all know what I'm what I'm trying to get at. I'm sure y'all know what I'm trying to get at. Thank you, Miss Hall. Yes, please click the like button when you come in the room. Please hit that like button. Thank you very kindly. I appreciate that. And if you are not already subscribed to my channel, again, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell, hit that notification bell so you can get all my notifications. But as far as, um, as far as, you know, him, uh, his age, Tamara, it says here he's 52, so you were close. We were close. We said 50. I couldn't remember. I knew it was 50 or 50-something. 50 um, but all the, uh, what's that, And You said he can have all the sex he wants. Of, ooh! <laughs> you, you said what Pookie and Ray Ray, Pookie, Ray Ray, and Day Day in them, huh? <laughs> Oh my God. Oh my God. But, oh my God. But yeah, um, he, he, he arrives at, he, he went into the police station today at 8 15 PM. Um, he's 52 years old. He's 52 years old. 10 counts, all involving underage victims between the ages of 13 and 17. Because, you have to remember, in some states, the legal age, you know, of, of consent, the legal age of consent, sometimes is 17, sometimes 18, sometimes 16. You know, it, it depends on what uh, state you live in. So, we know where he lives. But there's times where he travels with these women. He travels with these young girls on his tour buses. You know, he flies them all over the place. So when they say 13 and 17, I believe like some of the places, um, uh, the age of consent, you know, where he was having sex with some of these girls were in different states. That's what I think. You said Pookie and Ray Ray and them definitely wait. <laughs> yes. Yes, they waiting. They waiting. They were like, keep them shades on, Kills. Keep them shades on. <laughs> it's so sad. I mean, overall, we joke about it, you know, to try to lighten up the situation. But it's really sad. It's really sad. But, yeah, so, yep, 10 counts, all involving underage victims, you know, between the ages of 13 and 17. Um, again, they issued a no-bail arrest warrant for him. But, again, that doesn't necessarily mean that he won't eventually be given the opportunity to, you know, post, post, post bail or he won't be offered bail, you know. But they, they said R. Kelly was shocked. They said R. Kelly was shocked and appalled and taken aback. About these charges. He was shocked. Shocked. Narcissistic. 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 Regardless of these documentaries that came out. 
uh, regardless of how many interviews these ladies do or his, you know, ex-wife, Andrea, I really believe that R. Kelly just knew without a shadow of a doubt he would never, ever step into a jail cell or step into another courtroom involving anything like this. I truly believe he believed that. He's invincible. He's untouchable. He's R. Kelly. He's Mr. Step in the name of love. I believe I can fly and I shall not be bothered. <laughs> I really think that's how he's been feeling. So when they say he was shocked about the charges, I believe it. I believe it. I mean, how long ago was the documentary? The documentary was, um, what, like a couple of months ago, maybe? A month and a half? I can't remember the exact uh, time the documentary came out. But people were kind of expecting him to be arrested, like, right away after the documentary. So it's been some weeks since the documentary. So I'm sure, you know, folks is like, okay, ain't nothing going to happen again. He going to keep doing what he doing again. These ladies been heard, but they haven't been heard. You know what I mean? Um, so when he got indicted today, I'm sure he was shocked. He shouldn't be, but I'm sure he was just because of who he is. You said, I'm surprised one of the girls fought. Girl, who you telling? Who you telling? I'm surprised too. Or even they mamas. You said, Tam, you said he stole their innocence. They can never get who they would have. Exactly. Just like that girl. The one that, um, well, several of them got diseases. But the young one who was on the documentary show who got herpes when she was really, really young, when she was underage, um, not only her innocence, but her purity. Can I say that word? Purity? As far as, you know, diseaseless. No matter who she's involved with for the rest of her life, they got to know that she has herpes. She has to tell them that she got herpes. You know... You can't, you can't have a sexual relationship with anybody that you want the way you want ever again in life. You always have to be, regardless if you get married, you always have to be over, over protective to try to prevent your partner from also contacting the disease. I mean, if she ever has children, I don't know if she has children, if she ever has children, you can't be kissing your kids on the lips. You can't be kissing them all over their face and all over their cheeks. You can't be, you know, drinking after your kids, eating after your kids. I mean, it's like her whole life is, like, altered because of this situation. Yep, they have to rebuild the case with solid evidence and testimonies. And I guarantee you that them tapes this time, I bet you they clear as day. With the tapes last time with Kales, it was like... Oh, you know, some people, yeah, that looked like him. Oh, you know, that looked like him. No, is that her niece? Really? Is that her niece? I bet you them tapes as clear as day. I wonder if they gonna be, um, if they gonna get leaked. Like, like before, you know, before when those tapes got leaked and, um, everybody saw him, you know, peeing, urinating on that little girl and all that nasty stuff. And people were selling them out the back of their cars like Master P, pimping them tapes out the back of their trunk. I wonder if these uh, tapes will ever be leaked. And people will have the opportunity not saying I want to see them now. I ain't saying I want to see nothing. I just wonder. You never know. You never know. <clears throat> with these days, you never know because everything gets leaked. You said he stole their innocence. Oh, yeah, I read that one. He said, I have no idea what kind of parents these young ladies had. It couldn't be 
any see if any see you fam you fam you already know how we get down you already know how we get down <laughs> see that's my rello right there you right you right it, it couldn't be it couldn't be me it couldn't be me boy <laughs> and i already know how you is with your daughters too <laughs> Man, all you all you gotta do is just pick up the telephone. Pick up the telephone. Shoot, send that bird call. Hoo -hoo -hoo. We already know. We already know. But anywho, anywho. Um back to Kelly. <laughs> uh let's see. Bill Cosby went to prison last year. Harvey Weinstein is still, you know, awaiting trial. Um. Wow, this is this is crazy. They say Kelly was charged the day after Michael Avenatti, the attorney whose clients have included porn star Stormy Daniels, um, said he recently gave Chicago prosecutors new video evidence of the singer having sex with an underage girl. It was not immediately clear if the charges were connected to that video. That was, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious that it was. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. This is like 11 years after he was acquitted, you know, of the child pornography charges um, over that video that I was just discussing. That people was bootlegging out their trunks, um, and all through the projects and stuff. Uh, it's been eleven years since he got off, since he got acquitted for having sex with that thirteen-year-old girl. Um, wow, I'm like. I don't know. I don't want to say I'm excited. I I don't want to say I'm excited. Like I said again about Jesse Smollett. When you've been a fan of someone and you like someone, you like their work, you like their talent, um, you don't want to see them go to jail. You don't want to see them go to jail. But right is right and wrong is wrong. And if he's wrong, he needs to go to jail. He needs to go to jail. Bottom line, Bill Cosby, Harvey Weinstein, R. Kelly, um, and sadly enough, Jesse Smollett. Right is right, and wrong is wrong. You know, that's true, Tam. I need to, matter of fact, I need to look into that. We might have to discuss that one day. <laughs> Me Too movement is in full force. Yes, ma'am, Miss Hall, you right. <laughs> Did I miss anybody comments? I be trying to read everything. I'm surprised one of the girls probably, okay. Criminals secretly want to get caught. You know what, Tam? That is what a lot of criminals say. A lot of criminals say um, that they, I didn't heard criminals like, it might have been in movies, I can't remember if it was like bio, you know, biopics, like, you know, based off of true stories or if it was, um, uh, you know, fiction or something. But I've heard them say that I would never stop if I wouldn't be caught. They don't have the courage. They don't have the strength to turn themselves in. They, they weak. They can't, they can't turn they self in. Um, no matter how much of a stronghold they can do to somebody else, um, a child, a minor, you know, whether it's abuse or, or even if it's like, I don't know, a bank robber or anything like that. Criminals, a lot of the time, they know they will never stop if nobody takes them down. This could be Kel's situation. It could be. But y'all, this is going to be the... This is going to be the trial of the century. This is going to be a trial 
of the century. Um, way bigger than 2008. Way bigger. I think way bigger because back then, when he was acquitted for that uh crime, nobody, like the family, like, okay, the father was on the payroll. The father was on Kel's payroll. I think he played guitar for him or drums or something like that. The father was on the payroll. So, therefore, the whole entire family was reaping benefits from R. Kelly. Um, they didn't let the daughter testify. Uh, it's a different scenario this time. Because it's like weeks after the documentary when all those people from bodyguards to managers to other celebrities, singers, um, dancers, uh, you know, a lot of people came forward to speak against him. So this this whole situation is going to be a lot different from back then. They didn't have all those other people testifying about this girl, this girl, that girl, that girl, this girl, that girl. This documentary is going to play a big part in this decision. It's going to play a big part. And regardless of who they find uh, for the jury... It's going to be hard for them to find somebody on the jewelry as well um, who doesn't know anything about this case, who might not uh, be biased. Um, that documentary was seen all over. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, of course, even if we want the guy to be evicted, we still, you know, it's everybody's rights to have a fair trial. Everybody's right. To have, as American citizen, it's their right to have a fair trial. But I can't imagine how they can find a fair jury in this situation. In this situation. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know, y'all. We just gonna wait and see. But you know I'm gonna be on it. I'm gonna be following right behind this story. Um... Because this is this is about to be this is about to be a, a ride. It's gonna be a ride. You said, uh oh, what you say? Um, they had to rebuild the case of solid evidence testimony. Me too. Moving. Oh yeah, I moved, I read those. Nicole, you don't hear much about that. Okay, uh, okay, I'm caught up on all the chat. Okay, just want to make sure I didn't miss anybody's comment. But y'all. Keep your ears open, keep your eyes open, because this is going to be, this is going to be one case that we are not going to forget. No matter which way it goes, no matter which way it goes, this is going to be a case that's going to go down in history. It's going to go down in history. I'm praying that the victims, you know, uh, will be the one standing and not him. I pray that everybody who deserves justice get justice. And some of these ladies, some of these young girls who are now ladies now, of course, too much time has passed for some things. But still, it still brings you a little bit of peace, a little bit of justice to see the person finally get charged, even if it was doing the same thing they did to you to somebody else. It's like, finally, finally, they heard us. They heard one of us, you know? So it's like a win-win situation regardless. You know what I mean? I hope they run it on live TV too. Whew. You know, <laughs> man, if I lived in Chicago, I'm telling you, I, boy, I'll probably be trying to run down there every day. <laughs> I'll be trying. I'll be outside with my camera, coming to you live, Miss Tanya Primetime TV. Tanya's live Primetime TV downtown Chicago <laughs> from California Street. <laughs> R. Kelly trials going on right now. That that would be me. <laughs> That would be me. I'm not even a real news reporter, but I'd be down there. I have my camera. Like, hey, hold my cell phone. Hold my cell phone. <laughs> but yeah. But anywho, I, I really hope they do too. 
I hope they do too, because this is gonna be interesting. You said he may as well plead. Yeah, take the plea. You know, Tam. Hmm. If he was smart, he probably would do that, huh? Because I think they're gonna try to bury him. I think they're gonna try to bury him. They probably gonna try to get him the max too. You know why? Because so many people knows what he has been doing or what's been alleged alleged that he's been doing for years. So many people know it's true. So even let's say the judge or, you know, let's say they can give him, um, I don't know, 10 to 20 or 15 to, I don't know. I think they would probably throw try to throw the book at him and get him a maximum sentence. As far as justice for them all. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm just going to sit back. I'm going to watch. I'm going to keep my ears open, keep my eyes open. And whenever something, you know, big happens in this case or new evidence come in or, you know hard right turns or hard right left turns happen in this case i'm gonna be here talking about it you already know Seven, five, three, three, yeah it should it should be live it should be live yep you right you right it should be live i i really hope it does i really hope it does be live i really do and the thing about it is i work from home during the daytime i'm gonna have my tv on while I'm working and processing my disability claims and I'm going to have my TV on watching it. <laughs> Try not to mess up no claims. <laughs> but yeah. But you guys, um, if there's anything else y'all have to say about this or anybody who comes in after the live, please feel free to put it all in the comment section. I'll still get your notifications after the live is over and I can chit chat and chop it up with you in the comment section, you know, of the video. And for those of y'all who came in late, please rewind it all the way from the beginning and please watch the video. Thank you very kindly. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and please share this video on your platform. Share it on your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, you know, whatever platform that you use. Thank you very kindly. And in the meantime and in between time, prime time squad, as usual, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out. Deuces.